right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and our event with Larry Chai. Uh, went very well here. A lot of people uh, loved, everyone was here, loved his wines. And uh, sorry, Larry, about mispronouncing your name. You know, I guess uh, Tsai is not that far off. And uh, we learned, actually, it depends where you're from in China, how this name is pronounced. And uh, Larry's wife, Marianne, actually likes Tsai better. So she started pronouncing her name Tsai instead of Chai. So Larry said, what the hell? What do you mean Chai after you heard her say it? He goes, it's not Sai, it's Chai. You know that? She was, yeah, but I like Sai better. <laughs> so anyways, uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, these wines, outstanding. You know, when I met Larry at my, my trip to Napa in February for Premier Napa at the Philippe Melka tasting, after one taste of his wine, I knew, uh, wow, this is something special. And everything in the room with Philippe stamp on it really is something special. But these guys do the hardest thing in the wine business to do, make great wines, but they don't own a great vine of their own. Well, you know, they know the right people. And, you know, Mike Moon, the partner here, the Moon part of the Moon side, was in uh, work for Behringer for 30 years. So he got to know where the great grapes are growing in Napa working there. And uh, Larry is a very dynamic guy also, uh, you know, very good uh, storyteller. And he captivated the audience with the story of these wines this evening and his Chardonnay from Napa Valley, uh, 2011. One of the better 2011 Chardonnays that I have tasted. This is from Bald Mountain, so it's high elevation fruit and 73% uh, new French oak for 16 months. This wine sees quite a bit of oak, but man, it has got some intense fruit to match it. Only 695 cases produced. Lovely lemon drop candy, apricot fruit on the nose with notes of vanilla bean, creme brulee, cinnamon spice, lovely richness and complexity. A really rich and creamy wine on the tongue as well. A solid core, that lemon and peach apricot-like fruit and firm underbelly of acidity. This wine was perfect with the scallops of the tangerine, tangerine gremolata. Wow, most excellent juice at $69.75. And then the reds, just one lonely white. But uh, hey, if you're in Napa Valley, <laughs> Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet, uh, Cabernet, Cabernet, Cabernet. Uh, this is a Cabernet-centric winery. This is the first wine they started producing, the uh, 2006 Cabernet and seven. Um, he sent out from the winery. So it was nice to be able to get a little perspective on how these wines are going to age. But the new wines, definitely a step up. You can see these guys now really know what they're doing with this fruit they're getting. The 2010 Napa Cab was up first. And this is sourced from mostly from Caldwell Vineyard in Coombsville. And uh, this is an area south in the southeast Napa Valley. The soils are characterized by a unique blend of volcanic soils that are red and have a lot of clay in them. And uh, this planted on uh, gently sloping a plateau. And a uh, really nice uh, uh, terroir coming out in this wine. Really lovely, deep, dark, intense fruit notes of eucalyptus herbs espresso dark chocolate really rich but still has got balance this 2010 vintage is going to be one for the long haul you could definitely keep these wines but you know these wines really opened up quickly in the glass and uh, they didn't need a lot of decantering so very showy right now but lovely structure lovely balance and uh, this wine is comfort meets style here and uh, most excellent juice. The 2010 Howl Mountain Hillside Blend was uh, the crowd favorite. And uh, Larry describes this as Margaret Marilyn Monroe meets Margaret Thatcher. So I don't know what kind of weird uh, dreams he's got, no, but um, I like it when people describe wines like his songs and a, or his people, you know, a cross between people even more interesting. And this is 75% uh, Merlot from Howell Mountain, 25% Cabernet Sauvignon, only 446 cases produced. And this was the wine of the night, getting five boats. And this wine was just fabulous with the uh, uh, dish that my wife prepared, this short rib cannelloni with wild mushrooms, porcinis, a little cream sauce, and just really made this wine sing. One of the things I love about great wines, they're even better when you pair them with the right food. This wine had a lovely succulent plum and dark cherry fruit here, sweet herbs, big but still elegant. And this wine, you would never guess, is Merlot in a blind tasting. Well, it did have 25% Cabernet in it, richness and power, and uh, incredible balance. This wine, delicious, and uh, you know the wine of the night. And under $100 a bottle, yeah, $100 isn't expensive if you're a cult wine made by Philippe Melka, and uh, you only make 500 less or less cases. The Corleonis, the big boy, up next. And uh, this is from Oakfield's Heralded Tokalon Vineyard and Pritchard Hill and Caldwell. Kind of a unique thing to do, take three great vineyard sites and blend them together. A lot of people thought this was absolutely crazy, but uh, it seems to have worked. Not the biggest wine on the table, but uh, this wine... 
uh, really showing an elegance and a finesse and a lot of complex nuance on the finish and uh, really drinking nicely. Like I said, all these 2010s right out of the bottle and uh, lovely cassis and cherry fruit. And uh, like I said, not the biggest of the bunch, but it had just as much nuance and uh, just as much complexity and had a lovely earthy character to it. Fruit uh, really had lovely balance, even better on the second day and uh, a long layered finish, some nice chocolate and minty notes there. Most excellent juice at 245. Hey, you got to have that Ferrari that you take out every once in a while. The older vintage wine showed really nice, very different. The 2006 and 2007, the 2006 was the first vintage from the Caldwell Vineyard, and uh, this wine uh, had a lot of che chewy fruit still left to it, but uh, you could tell it had a little bit of age to it, the tannin softening out a little bit, 2006, a vintage that had a lot of structure, some nice dark spices in this wine, dark chocolate, really fresh, proud earth, and the 07, you really notice the barnyard in this wine, a very different wine to it, uh, and uh, the most old world of all of the wines, good amount of dark earth there, soy, dark chocolate, current cassis berry fruit, uh, still fairly young, youthful here in the, in the fruit department, and uh, really rich and layered. The tan is starting to uh, round out here, really nice velvety texture on the tongue. And like I said, that fresh earth, that old world, that nuance, that barnyard character showing more in this wine than any of the other wines. But still distinctly California, all the wines, excellent. Uh, oh, most excellent and uh, an incredible showing, a great night here at the Wine Watch. All right, I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.